Euro 2024 has been and gone and it's now time to get ready for the Premier League. Finally. I hope to God that we don't get five in a row, but honestly, this could be the most unpredictable Premier League in history. Last season, who had Liverpool challenging for the title? Jurgen Klopp leaving, Man United winning a trophy, Chelsea sacking Poch after cooking at the end of the season, Aston Villa getting Champions League football and Arsenal bottling the league again. Well, actually, that one was predictable to be fair. This season, we've got Arne Slot at Liverpool. We've got Ipswich back in the Premier League after 20 odd years. Chelsea having to rebuild again so they're not mid-table mandems. And we've got Tottenham looking for their first trophy since 2008. Anyways, let's do this. We are here for predictions. Let's get into my Premier League predictions for the 24-25 season. We're going to start at the bottom, of course, and I think relegation is going to be tight this year. It looks like it's going to be one of the strongest Premier Leagues. And in 20th, I'm going to go with Ipswich. We've seen back-to-back -back promotions from Ipswich Town, but a lot of their players are still from League One. And the step up to the Premier League is massive. It will depend on the rest of their transfer window whether they survive or not. What Ipswich will need to do is take their chances in the Premier League because if they don't, and other teams will punish them. In 19th and joining Ipswich in relegation is Nottingham Forest. They've been flirting with relegation in the last couple of years since they got back to the Premier League, but this year, they will not survive this one. To be fair, last season, they were only in a deep relegation battle because of the points deduction. And this year, with all the chat about rules and everything going on, who knows who it's gonna happen to this time. It's an unpredictable Premier League and an unpredictable Premier League hierarchy as well. But sitting in 19th and going back down to the championship is not Nottingham Forest. Southampton just got promoted, but they are gonna get relegated straight away. Southampton are in 18th. I just don't think they will have enough experience for the Premier League. Even though they've got a few Premier League players in there, I just don't think they're strong enough. All depends again on the transfer window and whether they can get it right. But Russell Howard is a good manager and he done well to get Southampton to the Premier League, although Leeds United were absolutely awful towards the end of last season's championship. So weren't much competition there. I'm gonna stick to my guns. Southampton, 18th. 17th from just surviving relegation is Brentford. They haven't really been fully involved in a relegation battle since they joined the Premier League a few years ago. And what I mean by fully involved is being there on the last day of the season, fighting for survival. But I think that changes this season. I think Ivan Tony leaves to go to a bigger club and that leaves them in trouble this year. Last season, they finished 13 points clear of relegation in 16th place, but this year, it's going to be similar, but they're going to be a lot closer to the relegation battle, especially with losing Ivan Tony. Brentford, 17. Next up in 16th, I'm going with the best team in West London. Fulham! <laughs> Only joking, Chelsea fans. It's Brentford. Fulham have been comfortable in the mid-table since they joined the Premier League again a few years ago. Before that, though, they were like a yo-yo team. So I'm surprised they survived this long. But is 16th mid-table? No, not really. But it's comfortable, isn't it? They've also lost Jao Palinha, who is a massive loss. So can they replace him? I don't think they can. So 16th, Fulham. In 15th place is Wolves. Wolverhampton Wanderers are just now a Premier League team, aren't they? They're just there. And for the next few years, they won't get Europe and they won't get relegated. They will just be there. They will get a few surprise results against the big boys here and there. They might have an interesting run in a cup competition or something like that. But other than that, there's nothing going on. They finished 14th last season. I see no evidence that they're going to improve on that position. So, Wolves... 15th. The team who has surprised everyone in the last couple of years is Bournemouth in 14th. Every season so far, Bournemouth have looked like they are certain to go down back into the championship and then they go on some Man City sort of run and survive. Will they do it again this season? Yep, I'm not writing Bournemouth off. I can't. Dominic Solanke, I mean, like, what a goal scorer my guy is. Why couldn't he be that at Liverpool a few years ago? So yes, Bournemouth will be chill in the Premier League this season. In 13th place, I'm going with newly promoted Leicester City. City. And it's still so weird saying newly promoted because they were Premier League champions just eight years ago and FA Cup winners literally three years ago. Out of those promoted sides that came up from the championship, Leicester have the strongest side and the most Premier League experience. I do think relegation was needed for them though as a little reset. It was a big surprise, but the club needed a reset. And don't get me wrong, they did struggle at times in the championship, but that place is unforgiving. Like it's one of the hardest leagues in the world. Leicester City will finish mid table and over the next few years, I think they will start building again to where they used to be, challenging for European places. 13th for the Foxes. So for this one, 12th place, I'm going with Brighton. Because honestly, I don't know what direction Brighton are going in at the moment. De Zerbi left, he ripped into their recruitment strategy, which I always thought was quite good. I don't know about you, but it was decent. And he left, and he was upset. There was a load of differences, and now they've got a new coach, Fabian Herzler, at 31 years old, 
he is the youngest coach in Premier League history. My man is younger than me, and he's younger than some Brighton players as well. Grob, Dunk, Veltman. It's a rebuild year for Brighton, and they finished 12th. 11th place, Everton. Final season at Goodison Park. Now, you all know I would love to see Everton get relegated, but it's just not going to happen, is it? I'm not going to do any predictions either. They will have that fire under their ass to give the Everton fans that final memories from Goodison Park, won't they? I'd love to see Everton in their new stadium in the Championship, but dreams are just dreams, aren't they? Everton, 11th. Now it's time for the top 10 of the Premier League and mid-table 10th is West Ham United. Last season, West Ham finished 9th. They wanted David Moyes out and now they've got Lepetegu in, who I actually think is a doppelganger for Gary Neville. Like, honestly, have a look at them two together. They're the same person. Anyways, the main talking point for West Ham is Poqueta. Is he going to stay or is he going to go? If he goes, what does that mean for West Ham? Losing their star player. Where are they going to finish? I think he does go, to be honest. Probably Man City. But there's no change for West Ham in the table, really. Same sort of position as before. No European football. Good little finish there for West Ham. Ninth position is Newcastle. Newcastle are an odd team to me. They are the richest club in the world. But how long are they going to keep Eddie Howe in charge? We know they can't sign many players. We know there's the rules in place and everything like that. But how long before they go and get a world class manager in charge? Now, this is nothing against Eddie Howe, by the way. I think he's a brilliant, brilliant manager. But to take it to the next level, will they need to go and get that big, big manager. For now, I can only see Newcastle finishing mid-table and they're going to get ninth. In eighth is a team I'm so bloody impressed with and that is Crystal Palace. The only downside is that they lost Elise to Bayern Munich, who is their best player, which Chelsea fumbled, by the way. They should have got him. And it looks like they're going to lose Eze to Tottenham, maybe. Uh, that'll be another big loss. But I see Crystal Palace having a decent season, a decent transfer window as well, and they're going to finish eighth position, which is decent. Seventh might be a little bit controversial to some people. People, but I'm going with it. Aston Villa. Now it's Aston Villa's first season in the Champions League and going off previous evidence with Newcastle in the Champions League, they dropped off. Brighton in the Europa League, they dropped off as well. These mid-table teams who are trying to break into the top four, it just falls off when they get into the big competitions. Of course, the big boys like Liverpool, Arsenal, Man United, Man City, Tottenham, etc. They are used to it, but Aston Villa will struggle to do both. Now I know Aston Villa were in the Conference League, but stepping up to the Champions League is a whole different game and I think Aston Villa might struggle in the league from there. Seventh is still a good season for Aston Villa, especially if they can get a nice little cup run, maybe an FA Cup or Carabao Cup. Aston Villa, seventh. The races for Europe are so bloody compact right now. It's so difficult to predict but in sixth place, I'm going with Tottenham. Tottenham are the England of club football. Fail when it matters. They're not ready for Champions League football just yet but they will challenge this season for the top four. Why don't they go all out for the Europa League this season? You know, concentrate on that competition. Get gets you into the Champions League and gets you a trophy. A first one in what, 17 years? Tottenham finished sixth. Fifth spot goes to one of the mid-table Mandem twins, Manchester United. Yes, for this I've let my emotional side take over because you lot know how much I hate Man United. I don't want Man United back in Champions League football. I don't want them wanting anything. I need them to fail. It's not a want, it's a need. And I said I weren't gonna do predictions, but I am gonna make one right now. If Man United finish above Liverpool this Premier League season, I will stand outside Old Trafford in a Man United shirt and a scarf, all the bloody murk, and I'll sing glory, glory, Man United. And you can clip that, you can save that, you can do what you want with that, because it's not gonna happen anyway. What I will say is that Man United have been cooking in the transfer window. They've made some good signings, but will that translate onto the pitch next season? So who's gonna get top four in the Premier League? Now, now, I might get cooked for saying this because it's the team I've been violating for years now. It's the other mid-table man, them twin Chelsea. Cole Palmer is going to be the difference for Chelsea. And if him and Nkunku as well, I really like Nkunku, if they can link up next season, I think Chelsea might be able to cook something up. Chelsea need to advance on what they've done towards the end of last season. They have to. The transfer window will be very important for Chelsea and sacking Poch was a big, big move. And it's going to be very telling whether it was right or wrong. How will Enzo Maresca do? Chelsea finished fourth. The top three in the Premier League. In third place, Liverpool. New manager, new team, and I think this is Salah's last season at Liverpool. And I've got a feeling that Arnstott will win a trophy in his first season at Liverpool. Now, not the Premier League, I don't think we'll win that, but maybe the FA Cup, Carabao Cup, Champions League. I might be dreaming, but you never know. A trophy in third place, I will snatch that out of your hand. But obviously, Jurgen Klopp's shoes are massive to fill. And at the time of this recording, we haven't signed anybody yet. I saw a stat the other day saying that out of the top five big leagues, Liverpool are the only club that haven't signed anyone. It might be different by the time this goes out, but Liverpool, 
come on. In second place and bottling it once again is Arsenal. To be fair, they didn't bottle last season's Premier League. They bottled the season before that. But three Premier League title races in a row. If you don't win it this time, that's a madness. I know it's Man City and they are a different, different machine. But 2023 was your year. You should have gone over the line with that one. You messed it up for yourselves. So what happens from there then? Arsenal fans, would you take second place in the trophy? Obviously, you wouldn't take the Champions League because that will never happen for you. But FA Cup, Carabao Cup. Arsenal, second place. God damn it. Man City win the Premier League again. Who's going to stop them? Because at this point, I'd rather have any other team win the Premier League other than Man United. No one had ever done four in a row in the Premier League. They won the treble. They've got the best midfield in the world, Rodri, De Bruyne. Best manager in Pep Guardiola, Haaland, Foden. Foden? Oh. Who the bloody hell is Fo Foden? And they're probably going to add more players in as well. They're probably going on sign Homelander from the boys. Then we're all done, aren't we? So, Man City win the Premier League once again. Let me know your Premier League predictions in the comments and let me know your thoughts on my predictions in the comments as well. Of course, at the end of this season, we will be reacting to these Premier League predictions to see how many I got wrong. But right now, let's continue the Premier League build-up. Check out this video right here. See you next time.